Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. 1 plus z to the fifth power equals 1 minus z to the fifth power. And we're going to be solving for z values. So there's a couple of different approaches that you can use here, especially if you're only looking for one solution. Uh, there's one that is obvious. Let's talk about that first. And then we'll talk about a couple alternatives. Okay. So why did we call this z instead of an x? Uh, you'll see in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and look at it from a very sim simplistic perspective. We have fifth powers on both sides. So why don't we just fifth root both sides? That's going to give us 1 plus z equals 1 minus z. And that means 2z is equal to 0, 2z or not 2z. And z equals 0 is going to be immediate result. So z equals 0 is obviously a solution. If you plug it in, you're going to notice that it satisfies the equation. But is that the only solution? No. This is a quintic, the z to the fifth power, by the way, is not going to cancel out. If we had z minus 1 instead of 1 minus z on the right-hand side, then z to the fifth would cancel out, leaving us with a quartic. But in this case, it's not going to happen. So we can think of it this way too. We can go ahead and subtract 1 minus z to the fifth from both sides and then kind of write it using the binomial theorem, or we could use a, a formula for a to the fifth minus b to the fifth, which is a minus b multiplied by a to the fourth plus a cubed b plus a squared b squared plus a b cubed plus b to the fourth power. Obviously, the first solution is going to give you z equals zero as before, and the other one is going to be the quartic, which should give you the other solutions. Okay? So you can do that as well, uh, or just expand it using the binomial theorem. Remember that the, the formula for a plus b to the fifth power is a to the fifth plus 5a to the fourth b, 10a cubed b squared, 10a squared b cubed. Notice the symmetry, plus 5ab to the fourth plus b to the fifth. This is the fifth root of the Pascal's triangle, and... Here's the coefficients, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so if you substitute that into this expression, so you can kind of do this in rows, for example, 1 plus z to the fifth is going to be 1 plus 5, and then notice that it's going to be multiplied by 1 all the time. You don't have to worry about it. Only focus on b, which is raised to first, second, third, so on and so forth powers. So in this case, it's going to be 5 times b, which is 5z, and then you're going to get 10z squared plus 10z cubed plus 5z to the fourth, and finally it's going to be z to the fifth. Obviously, this is the same thing as z plus 1 to the fifth power, just written in reverse order. And then with the 1 minus z to the fifth, we can go ahead and write it as pretty much the same thing, except these are going to be minus signs. So the sign will alternate like this. And of course, this is going to be a negative one. And we're supposed to subtract it. So to be able to subtract these two expressions, let's go ahead and negate the second one and then add them. So this is going to be a minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and plus. And when we add these now, this is going to give us a zero. Obviously, the z squared is going to cancel out. And that's going to leave us with the odd powers. So from here, we're going to get z to the fifth twice. So we can put a two out and write z to the fifth plus 10 z cubed plus 5z, and the whole thing is equal to 0, right? Because we subtracted it, the answer is 0. Okay, so from here, uh, obviously, we already knew that z equals, u, um, z equals 0 is a solution. We can go ahead and take out a z. That gives us z to the fourth plus 10z squared plus 5 equals 0. And by way of substitution here, so we can go ahead and call z squared uh, set it equal to t, and then that gives us t squared plus 10t plus 5, and from here we can basically look for uh, the solutions. So t is going to be from here negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 100, minus 4ac, which is 20, that's going to be the square root of 80, that's going to be 4 root 5, and then if you divide everything by 2, you're going to get negative 5 plus minus to root 5. Obviously, uh, if you think about these, uh, negative 5 plus 2 root 5 and negative 5 minus 2 root 5 are both negative because if you square 2 root 5, you get 20. 
If you square root negative 5, you get 25. Make sense? So they're both negative. What that means is that you're not going to get real solutions. They're going to be complex because remember, t is equal to z squared. So you can basically proceed with this, uh, which is going to take a little while. For example, if you just take one of these, z squared is equal to t, which is negative 5 plus 2 root 5. And then we kind of have to write it as uh, follows. We, we have to consider uh, two roots. One of them is going to be, and since this is a negative quantity under the radical, it can be written as negative 1 times 5 minus 2 root 5. And then obviously the square root of negative 1 is just going to generate an i. And of course there's going to be a plus minus sign here as well. And this is going to look like this. Square root of 5 minus 2 root 5 multiplied by i. So that's going to be two of the values. And we can do the same thing for negative 5 minus 2 root 5. If you take its absolute value, it's going to be 5 plus 2 root 5. That's going to come under the radical because you have to have a, a positive number under the radical because you take out the i. Make sense? Okay, so that's basically one approach. It wasn't super bad, right? I mean, z to the fifth didn't cancel out, but other things canceled out, leaving us with a biquadratic uh, after we take out the z, which gave us z equals zero, of course. We already knew that, right? Cool, so that's pretty much my first approach, and let's go ahead and talk about the second approach, and hopefully you'll like this as well. Let me know which one you like better though. So we have 1 plus z to the fifth power equals 1 minus z to the fifth power. Great. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by, in, in the first method we basically subtract it and use the binomial theorem. This time we're going to use an alternative approach and divide both sides by the right hand side. And this is not going to be 0 because obviously z equals 1 does not satisfy this equation. So we're allowed to divide by this. But one thing that's really good about it is they're both fifth powers, so we can kind of put them under the same power and then set equal to one. Now what is so special or good about being able to write it this way is coming from complex numbers. That's why I use the z here. I could have used the x as well, but uh, z is generally used for complex numbers and complex solutions. And in this case, you know that z does not equal one, right? Okay because it doesn't satisfy the original equation. So here's what we can do. We can take the fifth root of both sides, but before we do, because there are five fifth roots of a complex number, and we can write them in polar form, so let's go ahead and write one in polar form first. To be able to write it, we were basically gonna consider the unit circle, one unit from the origin, and the angle it makes is zero degrees, or you can write it um, as two pi, or just multiples of two pi. In other words, this can be, one can be written as e to the power 2n pi i. Some people write it as i times theta, doesn't matter, no big deal, but I like to write the i at the end. So far so good. Now what are we going to do? To find the fifth root, we're just going to raise both sides to the power 1 over 5, and that should give us exponentially e to the power 2n pi i over 5. Now, the values of n are integers, and n can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, giving us five complex fifth roots of this number. And of course, from here, we, we should be able to solve for z, right? If you do a little bit of, uh, what is it called? Hocus pocus, componendo, dividendo, something like that, should give you z as 1 minus e to the power 2n pi i over 5, divided by 1 plus e to the power 2n pi i over 5. Again, you're going to use the same values, and from here you're going to get the answer. z can also be written as e to the power negative n pi i over 5 minus e to the power uh, n pi i over 5, and that is divided by e to the power negative n pi i over 5 plus e to the power n pi i over 5. Okay, you can kind of do a, a little division here and then get this. And of course, there's something good about it because these are kind of like sine and cosine expressions. And this is going to give you uh, negative 2i times sine k pi over 5, which is going to bring us to the square root of uh, 5 minus 2 root 5 value. And this is going to be the 2 cosine k pi over 5. And if you simplify this a little bit more, so z is going to turn out to be negative i times tangent of k pi over 5, where k values, or I should say n values, 
n values are just going to be, and I wrote k there too? Oh, okay, that should be an n2. And n pi over 5, n pi over 5. And now this is going to be general solutions. And you can put a little n here if you want, z sub n. And n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.